If you like DraftKings in the online gambling space, I think the best bet in the industry is not DraftKings and not FanDuel or their owner Flutter. It's actually MGM Resorts. MGM in most cases is the number three market share in the US. They have international exposure. And by the way, they have a massive footprint of casinos, not in the US, but also Macau and soon in Japan. And this is a profitable business. So the question for online gaming for a very long time has been, can these companies spend as much money as they need to on advertising to attract customers? And will those customers be profitable long-term? None of these companies have been have proven to be profitable long-term. So at least with MGM, you're getting a profitable business at the core and you're getting optionality with the online gaming business. And so that's why I think it's a much better stock to own than something like DraftKings. But I'm gonna dig into the numbers today and compare the two. They're a little bit different, but actually DraftKings is a more expensive company than MGM Resorts is. So, so that's something to keep in mind as well. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. You go to fool.com slash ASYM. They'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. Let's look at some charts from MGM because they actually put their own competitive position in pretty good context. This is part of MGM's bet MGM update in their fourth quarter results. And you can see that their gaming share in iGaming has been declining over the last year or so. And competitor one and competitor two are going to be the big players, DraftKings and Flutter. But bet, bet MGM third place amongst these three. So I think that's a pretty good market share for a company where you're getting a profitable core and this is optionality for growth in the future. The other piece to watch is market share in sports betting and iGaming. So this is the two of these combined. Again, same two companies at the top and bet MGM in third place, losing a little bit of market share over the past year. But the big difference between those two and bet MGM is bet MGM achieved profitability in the second half of 2023. And they're aiming for $500 million in EBITDA by 2026. So they're really focused on profitability at bet MGM as opposed to growth at all costs. Oh, by the way, they also have this massive casino business. This is the Las Vegas strip resorts, $2.4 billion in revenue, adjusted property EBITDA, 864 million. And this is just for the fourth quarter. There's also regional casinos, 233 million in adjusted property EBITDA. And then Macau, which they call MGM China. They own a little bit of, uh, they own a little bit over half of this subsidiary. And again, a very profitable business that just continues to spit off cash year after year. And if that isn't enough, there is MGM Japan, which is expected to open in 2030. And when open, this could be one of the most profitable resorts in the world. You're getting all that for a company with a market cap of right around $15 billion. They have about $3 billion in net debt on the balance sheet. So about $18 billion in enterprise value. And like I said, that bet MGM business is just icing on the cake. If the industry grows, if it's available in more and more states, and MGM is also building an international online gaming business, you get that in addition to the core profitable casino business. But I want to compare this to DraftKings because this is the really hot stock right now. And I have a lot of questions about how sustainable their business model is long term. Now, if you just look at DraftKings revenue and net income, which this chart shows, you can see that revenue has been growing like crazy. 63% annual compound annual growth rate between 2017 and 2023. And that's incredibly impressive. What DraftKings hasn't been able to do is turn that to into a profitable business, $802 million in losses in the past year. Now that did decline to just $44.6 million, $44 million in losses in the fourth quarter of 2023. So those losses are starting to come down, getting a little bit more leverage in the business. But here's fundamentally the challenge is, can DraftKings grow to be profitable given the fact that they're spending almost $2 billion per year on sales, general, and administrative expenses. This is all the ads on podcasts that you hear, the advertising on television, on YouTube, everywhere. DraftKings seems to be advertising along with all of its other competitors. And I think all of these companies are just fighting for the same customer base. And that customer base has been growing as more and more states have been legalizing online gaming. But how profitable can they be and how sticky is the business model? There's really the core problem is, is DraftKings or Flutter or BetMGM, is there anything keeping customers from moving from platform to platform depending on who has the best bets? Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. 
Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Now, DraftKings did say that they are getting more profitable as states get a little bit older, so older vintages as they call them. This first chart is gonna be 2018, 2019 state vintages. They were still losing money on those states as of 2021, but they started to be profitable in 2022. And then this was a presentation from November. So this is estimated numbers for 2023, 2020 and 2021. So basically middle of the pandemic vintages were not profitable the first year. And they did start to introduce contribution profit in the second and third year in 2022 and 2023. The last two years, those state vintages are not profitable yet, but you would expect these to move up the profit curve. So the question really ultimately is, what are you getting for a company like this? The growth has been driven by a lot of expansion into new states. Yes, there has been some organic growth in existing states, but as more states have been added to the roles, that has really fueled DraftKings, especially as a first mover, and a lot of its online competitors. So this is where we get to the point where the decision for investors is really, do you want to go with the unknown and bet on the fact that DraftKings is gonna be able to continue growing revenue, gonna increase those margins, and it's ultimately gonna to get to profitability and positive free cash flow where MGM Resorts already is today. In, in 2023, MGM Resorts generated $1.76 billion in free cash flow. That doesn't include a, the, a lot of the improvement that continues to happen in MGM China, the continued profitability improvement for bet MGM and the coming resort in MGM in Japan. So you get $1.76 billion in free cash flow, and that will likely increase pretty significantly over the next 10 years. On the other hand, DraftKings had negative free cash flow of $22.7 million and has burned through billions of dollars over the last few years. Now those numbers are improving, so that's absolutely something to consider, but the question is how far can they improve and how much revenue growth can the company generate and how many new markets can they move into? I just think there's ultimately gonna be a cap on the profitability for a lot of these online gaming companies because the switching cost just isn't very big. Opening up a different app to look for the betting odds for a specific sports event or playing a different iGaming game is very different than the physical infrastructure that it takes to build casinos and build an ecosystem around something like the Las Vegas Strip or Macau. So I think those are gonna be much more sustainable cash flows and investors who are betting on MGM and investors are, who are betting on DraftKings are betting on something that is unknown in the future and has not proven to be profitable long-term. So I think if you're interested in DraftKings, the better bet, the safer bet is going to be MGM Resorts. You're getting actually a pretty good value on the stock. You get exposure to bet MGM and their international online gaming business, and you get that core business that's among the best and most profitable gaming businesses in the world. But what do you think? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.